thank you. For you are God, there's no controversy. From the beginning to the end, this morning we have come to return all the glory to you. Father, let your name be praised. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, this morning, we acknowledge that you have been good to us. Lord, cause your voice to be heard on this mountain. In the name of Jesus Christ. And let all the glory and the honor be unto you. In Jesus' precious name. Amen, amen and amen. amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. amen. Somebody is blessed this morning. Amen. Give the Lord a clap offering. Hallelujah. And please have your seats in his presence. Praise the Lord. It's my new dawn era. Amen. The prophetic focus for us this month are seasons of glory. Seasons of glory. In the name of Jesus, you will not miss this season. This season, in the name of Jesus, you will be going from one level of glory to the other. In Jesus' precious name. In our Sunday services, we're looking at this teaching series, Riding the Waves of Glory. Riding the Waves of Glory. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 12, we saw in that verse 7, that the manifestation of the Spirit of God is given to every man to profit. The manifestations of the Spirit is given to all of us, you and I, to profit. This month, you will profit by the Spirit. Amen. The crowd for six is not by might or by power, but by my Spirit. We saw a picture of a lamb, a golden lamb, that had all the connections. She starts from verse one. But it was just a show. that depict what it was created for. And then, in that verse 6, it says, not by how you look, who you know, what you know. It's not by power or by might. It's by the Spirit, the Spirit of God. And that Spirit, the manifestation of the Spirit of God, is given to us to profit. Profit in what sense? To fulfill destiny. To be who God has created you and I to be. And this month, you shall receive fresh grace, Amen. fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So when that power comes upon us, when we are baptized by the Spirit of God, then we are now able to operate in the realm of the supernatural. So Isaiah 61, verse 1, all the way down, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Why? Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the graves to them that are bound. Now, you know that takes power. And no matter how conscious you are, no matter how sympathetic one may be, you can't free nobody without being anointed. You can't console, you can't comfort. He said, now, I'm able to do all this because the Lord has anointed me. This month, in the name of Jesus, fresh grace, fresh anointing will come upon you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. So, the Spirit is given to us to profit. And we saw, again, in that 1 Corinthians 12, from verse 4 to 6, that there are diversities of that gifting, of that baptism of the Holy Ghost, the power given. There are diversities of gifts. There are of, of, but of the same spirit. There are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. There are diversities of operations, but it's the same God that worked all in all. The same spirit. Diversities. And we'll 
go down in that first Corinthians 12, the different gifts of the Holy Spirit, the nine gifts enumerated there from verse 7 all the way to 12. The gift of wisdom, knowledge, gifts of healings, of faith, of prophecy, of discernment, of tongues and interpretation of tongues. All these diversities of gifts by the same Spirit. This month, receive fresh grace in Jesus' precious name. So, from the beginning of the month, we have been looking at riding the waves of glory. We are looking at um, the diverse ways of riding this wave of glory. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit, by the spirit of obedience, by the spirit of meekness. We saw the spirit of faith, the spirit of servanthood. And as we continue this morning, we're looking at another dimension of the Holy Spirit to ride these waves of glory. You will not miss your portion in Jesus' precious name. The spirit of love, the spirit of love, the spirit of love. To ride this wave of glory, you must have the spirit of love. Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. He said, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. He has not given us fear. What we have is the spirit of love by the Holy Spirit, the spirit of love. We saw Jesus speaking in John 21 from verse 15 all the way down. He was asking this apostle, Peter, Simon, Simon, love it thou me. Do you love me more than this? The spirit of love. Do you love me more than the position, more than the car you wanted, more than the healing you wanted? Do you want me more than the crowd you want to attract? You say, Lord, you know I love you. Well, if you love me, then feed my sheep. Take care of my lamb. Do my will. The spirit of love. For we need that spirit of love to love the unlovable. No one can love because man is difficult. Nature of man. We're naturally selfish. We're self-centered. All of us. But when we have the spirit of love, we are able to love somebody else. Do you love me more than this? The spirit of love. So when we are baptized with this spirit, then we are able to love God and love the things that he loves. And God loves people. For God so loved the world that what? He gave his only begotten son. You can't give unless you love. You can't give of your resources, of your time, of your talent, of your gifts without the spirit of love. No matter how much you can be, you may be compelled to do something if you are not empowered by the spirit of love, it soon fizzles out. A lot of the things we do are driven by motives, by you know, the things that we desire or that we accrue to us. But when we are baptized with the spirit of love, love of God, then it doesn't really matter because you are empowered to love the unlovable. Again, a lot of our prayers, our you know, activities, religious activities, are centered on what we can get. God remembered, I went to St. Paul, <laughs> so you must do this one. Did you really go to St. Paul because you love him or because of what you can get? So oftentimes we're discouraged when our expectations are not met. You say, God, you know it's been two hours. Hurry up. <laughs> when will this be delivered? The spirit of love. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them that are called according 
to his purpose. To them, everything work together for the good of them, only those that love God. Everything. So that goes that we shouldn't even worry about what is that thing. Because it doesn't really matter. If your love for God is in place, everything will work together. Even those things that are meant for evil. So again, most of the time we're preoccupied with, you know, what was done, what was said, what is happening, what will happen. But for, if you love God, everything will work together for your good. Everything will work together for your good. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, the spirit of love. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. For it is written, eyes have not seen, ears are not heard. It hasn't entered the hearts of men. This is something that has not been conceived. No one has thought about that. The things that are reserved for those that love God. The things that are prepared for them, that love him. The spirit of love. So, I guess for you and I this morning, we must check our love meter and see what is the condition of your love for God. Are you serving God because of what you can get, what you can take, or you serve God because you love him? We had our father in faith, God's servant, the apostle over this commission. When our mother was challenging her health, he said that you heal her does not make you God. Even if you don't heal her, I love you, I follow you. The spirit of love. In the name of Jesus Christ, this month, receive fresh baptism of the spirit of love. Because until we have that spirit, we are not able to serve him. We will be wearied. We will be, you know, God, you see, I, I, I did this two years ago. I did this for you in uh, China. I did this for you in uh, Boston. I did this, I did that. But you did not do this. That's not the spirit of love. When we have this spirit of love, just as we have read, 1 Corinthians 2, 9, Romans 8, 28, everything works together for them that love God. When you have this spirit of love, it doesn't matter whether you get it or not. You are not serving him because of what you can get. But you know that when you serve him, you get everything. So that keeps us from being frustrated, disappointed, angry, even with God. So God, I've been serving you, you haven't done anything. I've been praying this one prayer. You have not, you just ignore me. Are you still there? The spirit of love. Receive that fresh grace this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. So it is by this spirit that we ride the waves of glory. The spirit of love. The spirit of love. This month, your love for God is rekindled. Amen. And we're looking at the second, like it, is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. To ride on this wave of glory that is reserved for you and I, we must have the spirit of the fear of the Lord. You must fear God. Joseph said, but I fear God. I can't do, how can I do this evil thing? I fear God. I refuse to put my hand. Yes, it's tempting. Yes, it's pleasurable. But I fear God. I cannot do that because I fear God. Now, fear, fear God, fearing God not by dread but by reverence. I cannot, I cannot grieve him. The spirit of the fear of the Lord. And we saw that in that Isaiah 11, verse 1 and 2, out of the stem of Jesse, there shall... Arise a rod, a branch shall grow out of his roots. And that's talking about Jesus. He said, upon now that rod, who is Jesus, shall rest the seven spirits of God. The same spirit, the Holy Spirit, the seven spirits. So these seven spirits are the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. And the spirit of the Lord, that is the anointing, number one. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. But not just that, he said, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, of counsel and of might, the spirit of knowledge, and then the preserver, I call it, the fear of the Lord. Because see, if you see the previous six, a lot of people celebrate, you know, the gifts. Oh, you, you know, he has, a, for example, Samson. 
He had the spirit of might, no wisdom. He didn't have the preserver. What we have preserved his destiny? The spirit of the fear of the Lord. Three times this witch came to him. What is your secret? First time, second time, until he told her the real answer. And they shaved his head. So the, the fear of God was missing. So it was not preserved. But you will be preserved. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. But you see, com compare that to Joseph. The same. He had the spirit of wisdom, of understanding, to interpret things, to know things beforehand. I said, but how can I do this evil thing? No. He ran for his life when that witch was tempting him. The same order of witch. The same spirit. In Potiphar's wife and whatever her name is, Delilah. It's the same spirit. But Joseph said, no, I fear God. I can't do this evil. And he ran for his life. Because he had that spirit of the fear of the Lord, he would have ended his life in that house as the chief steward. But his destiny was to be the prime minister. Look at, is that comparable? See what the devil was trying to steal from him from a two-minute pleasure. He will have traded two minutes for a lifetime. The fear of the Lord. This month, this morning, by this anointing, you will be baptized with the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Because when you have that spirit, the fear of God, that guides us, that keeps us in line to say, no, I can't put my hands there. I cannot be found. What, what, would people, what would God say before people say? Because a lot of time we're scared of, we, we, you know, we're mindful of what people say. So you, you keep creeping. You know, I, I saw, I read something very funny, a meme. So maybe you guys have read it. You know, a, a little child in school, they were asking him, uh, give three examples of animals that creep at night. <laughs> oh, you for Sunday, right? So he said a mouse... Uh, a roach and daddy. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> so if you are creeping, stop creeping. <laughs> Amen. So uh, oftentimes we are very mindful so people don't see you. So you park your car two miles away and walk there. The day they will catch you, we'll see you, you know. Because your car has a winner sticker. <laughs> so you go park it behind the building somewhere. Amen. So we are more mindful of what people will say, what pe where people will see us. But God has sees everything. Oftentimes we don't even, it's like, okay, God, you look like this. Nobody sees me and then you creep. Amen. The fear of the Lord. So when we have that spirit of the fear of the Lord, that guides us in all, everything that we do, in our relationships and on the job, in the church, at home, everywhere. Because when you fear God, that will keep you in line, in check. You will not miss your portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Talking about Jesus, Romans 1.4, he said, and declare to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. The fear of the Lord is also called the spirit of holiness. When you fear God, you can, there's things you can eat. There are places you can go to. There are things you can, you can be heard, you say. All these raunchy you know, jokes can be found in your mouth. Amen. The spirit of the fear of the Lord. That is coming upon you. In Jesus' precious name. Psalm 25, verse 14, he said, The secret of the Lord is with who? With them that fear him. So when we have that spirit of the Lord, of the fear of the Lord, he begins to show you things that nobody else knows. The secret things he unveils to us. Remember in that 1 Corinthians 2, 9, he said, What eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, hasn't had entered the hearts of men. Verse 10, he said, Now, it has been revealed to us. By the Spirit of God. So when we have the fear of the Lord, He begins to reveal things that eyes have not heard, ears have not, I mean, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Things that have not been conceived by any man. 
the fear of God. Receive that fresh grace this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. And something like that is the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Wisdom and understanding. And I, I, I've heard it said, I've repeated it severally. You know, I, somebody said, uh, knowledge is knowing that tomato is a fruit. Tomato, tomato, however you call it. <laughs> so that is knowledge that you know this is a fruit. But wisdom is knowing that it does not belong in a fruit salad. So wisdom is the application of knowledge. And it's a spirit. That is what Solomon had to make him stand out. So there's not, not since then, had that same order of the spirit of wisdom. That kings and queens will come to hear and listen to him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 9. And that is what everyone needs. You can't excel without wisdom. Deuteronomy 34, 9. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of what? Of the spirit of wisdom. This month, you will be full with the spirit of wisdom. Amen. How did he get it? He said, for Moses had laid his hands upon him. And the children of Israel hearkened to him and did as the Lord commanded Moses. So this spirit of wisdom is impartable. The spirit of wisdom. And we know that is very operational in this great commission. That is why this ministry stands out. We heard our father when the faith tabernacle was being constructed. And a lot of, a lot of the engineers and the every, you know, technicians, every skilled people were confounded. Now, they had a need to bring in an equipment, um, like a lift, into the main sanctuary under construction. But the, the, the entrance was too low. So he said, let's break the wall, How, you know, because we needed to get it in. I said, he came, he said, what's going on? He said, we need to get this thing in. But we're thinking of removing a section of that wall so it can fit in. So how many inches? Because the, the size of the wheels, do you need the clearance? Maybe what, nine inches or thereabout. So he said, now, deflate the tires. Amen. You are looking. <laughs> yeah. So the cost of breaking down walls and the wheels, just reduce the air and they go in. That's the spirit of wisdom. That God will show you things that has confounded everybody else. And that is applicable in every area of life. Wisdom in your home. When you have the spirit of wisdom, you know how to relate with your husband or with your wife, with your children, and on the job, everywhere. That fresh grace is coming upon you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. As this all comes upon you this morning, you will receive fresh grace, fresh baptism Amen. of the spirit of wisdom. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus had it without measure. And I believe every one of us must covet that. You should pray and ask for that. Because it's not just for pastors or for presidents. or Everyone. It's application. You can have all the knowledge. If you don't know how to apply it, guess what? You, you, are, you, are, you are stranded. We need the spirit of wisdom. So as to know what to do part time. John 6, 6, Jesus himself knew what to do. He was never stranded. He knows every time, no matter what the challenge is, he knows what to do. That is the Holy Spirit at work. The spirit of wisdom. Receive that fresh grace this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. This month, you will not remain the same. You will receive fresh baptism of these gifts of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. So you take careful note of that. I don't know, maybe you don't even know what you have, but everyone that is redeemed has at least one of these gifts. And you don't know what those gifts is? Again, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Read through that from verse 1 all the way to 12 so you have an understanding. There are nine gifts listed there. You can ask for any one of them. 
and you can go over to the spirit, the spirit, I mean the seventh spirit of God. Isaiah 11, verse 1 and 2. This month, you will not remain the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. Well, this morning is our covenant day of vengeance. Covenant day of vengeance. The Lord will avenge you speedily. In the name of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord is going forth now. And shortly we'll be anointed afresh with fresh oil. As this anointing comes upon you, the Lord will avenge that issue. Amen. Whatever the enemy has done or is doing that is contrary to the covenant, in the name of Jesus Christ, God will arise for you. Amen. And he will avenge you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, quickly this morning, as we study this, go through this, we'll be looking at these three areas, these questions, to try to answer that. Why will God take vengeance, number one? Why will God avenge you? Why will God take vengeance? Number two, who does God avenge? And how will he, how will God avenge? Praise God. Now, Isaiah 35, I mean 34 verse 8, Isaiah chapter 34 verse 8. He said, for it is the day of the Lord's vengeance. What it is? What is today? Today is the day of the Lord's vengeance. He said, and the year of recompense for the controversy of Zion. Today, by the Spirit of the Lord, our Father God's servant said, today is covenant day of vengeance. And this is what the Lord said. This day is the day of the Lord's vengeance. And the Lord will avenge you. I said, the Lord will avenge you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, he went on and said the year of recompense for the controversy. What, do we, what is controversy? Controversy of Zion. Well, controversy meaning anything contrary. Contrary views. Negative medical reports or financial report or whatever demonic report it may be. Anything happening, buying and selling in your body is a controversy. And this is what God said. The year of recompense for the controversy of Zion. This day, the Lord will avenge you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Anything that is contrary to God's plan and purpose for your life, this day is the day of vengeance. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 34, 8. Now, Luke 21, verse 22. Luke 21, 22. He said, for this be the days of vengeance. What it is? This Luke 21, 22. This be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be what? Fulfilled. Because all things written are not yet fulfilled. It is written that you shall be fruitful. Hmm? But I say today, this day, this day, right this very minute, is a day of vengeance. That what? That which is written about you must be fulfilled. He said, you shall be married. He said, you will, this earth, this ground will yield to you. So everything that is written about you, the redeemed, he said, it shall be fulfilled. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, before we go into those three um, areas of focus, I say, what would, why would God take vengeance? Who does God avenge and how will God avenge we must take note of these three things quickly. Number one, that vengeance belongs to God. Understand, number one, that vengeance belongs to who? It belongs to God. That means you don't avenge yourself. We don't avenge yourselves, our, ourselves. So we don't target people. Vengeance belongs to who? To God. Because you and I, human beings, we dwell in the realm of suspicion. Suspicion. This, this old woman, she, you know, when I, I've shared this story, when I was growing up, you know, we don't go to our, you know, we only go once a year for Christmas. And it is, before you go, you are, it's drilled in your head. You don't eat anywhere. Don't let anybody touch you. So every old woman we see, she's a witch. <laughs> It doesn't follow, right? But that is the realm of suspicion. And that is what oftentimes we dwell in as human beings. 
So somebody called you yesterday, and today your car broke down. You say, hey, now I know. It's because it's that woman. She doesn't like me. That's suspicion. Amen. Vengeance belongs to God. Praise God. Vengeance belongs to God. But we know why. Because God moves in the realm of discernment. Amen. Suspicion is not a gift of the spirit. Discernment is. Amen. So understand that vengeance belongs to God. What is discernment? Knowing it beforehand. And you know that by the you know, word of wisdom, that is beforehand, right? Ahead, before it happens. The spirit of discernment is of God, is of the Holy Spirit. So don't dwell necessarily in the realm of suspicion. Um, you know, oftentimes, most of the time, we put faces on things happening to us. That is a witch. This is, you know, whatever. Maybe true, maybe not, not true. Amen. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 24. Number one, I said, vengeance belongs to God. This is what God said. Isaiah 1, 24. Therefore said the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel. What is he saying? Ha, you see, I love this. You know, is, is it not the way we talk? What did he say? Ah, at least in my village. <laughs> that is serious. He said, I will what? Ease me of my adversaries and avenge me of what? Of my enemies. Who is speaking? God. God. He said, I will ease me of my adversary and avenge me of my adversaries. Vengeance belongs to God. And he will avenge you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 12, verse 19. Dearly beloved, Avenge not yourself. Romans 12, 19. Don't avenge yourselves. But rather, give place unto wrath. For what? It is written, Vengeance is mine. And I will repay, saith the Lord. Vengeance belongs to God. Amen. And you know why? Because perhaps God has not avenged you because you have tried to do it yourself. All this while. You are holding people. Let them go. Let God. Because he said, vengeance is mine. So if you try to do what belongs to him, he just folds his hand and look at you. How is that working out for you? Obviously it has not worked. Because they are still bewitching you. <laughs> vengeance <clears throat> belongs to God. So don't hold people in your heart. Don't carry a grudge. Hand them over to the one who has the vengeance. And God will show up for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. I said this morning, God will show up for you. Amen. Psalm 94, verse 1 and 2. Oh Lord God, to whom vengeance belongs. Who does it belong to? God. O oh Lord God, to whom vengeance belongs. O oh God, to whom vengeance belongs. What? Show yourself. This morning, God will show himself on your behalf. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. So we have to let God arise so he can fight the battle. It's not in your hands. Vengeance, there's nothing you and I can do. Vengeance belongs to God. So let go and let God. Let it go. The people you are holding in your heart for, you know, in my village again, there's a saying that, um, uh, what is the analogy? Uh, you know, a, a plate, a heart plate, a 20-year-old heart plate is still born in your hands. 20 years. 20 years heart plate is still hot in your hand. You don't get it. That means this thing that has gone on too long, it happened when you were in kindergarten. You see, that's how, you know, grudges and, you know, family things go on. Grand, Great-grandfather passes on to grandfather. Grandfather passes on to father. Now it's, they pass it to you. Drop it. They are long dead. Let them go. Start a new leave. Amen. Vengeance belongs to God. Number two, we must understand also that there is a divine timing. 
There's a divine timing for God to unleash the vengeance. It belongs to him, so don't take it from him. But there's a divine timing. Isaiah chapter 63, verse 4. Say, for the day of vengeance is where? Is in my heart. And the year of my redeem is come. There is a divine timing. It belongs to him and he knows when. He knows when the cup is full. The day of vengeance is in my heart. And the year of my redeem is come. Your year is come. I say your year is come. On this covenant day of vengeance, the Lord will avenge you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Exodus chapter 9. Verse 5 and 6. Exodus chapter 9, verse 5. Number 2, there is a divine timing to unleash his vengeance. Exodus 9, 5. He said, and the Lord appointed a set time. What did he do? There is a set time. Tomorrow, the Lord shall do this thing in the land. There is an appointed time. The Lord appointed a set time. And for you, it is this morning. Amen. For you, that set time for vengeance is this covenant day of vengeance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say, tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land. So God has a set time to visit your household enemies. Every power and principality. Every witch and wizard. Everything that has held you bound. This is that set time. In the name of Jesus Christ. And we know, you know, God is always on time, right? He's never late. He's always on time. Verse 6. What did he do? Verse 6, Exodus 9. Say, and the Lord did that thing on the morrow. And all the cattle of Egypt died. Every devil, they are dead this morning. He said, all the cattle of Egypt died. But of the cattle of the children of Israel, died not one. Not one died. Now, say, they say that where you are sitting. Lord God, arise and avenge me. Will you say that prayer? It takes a second. Jesus, avenge me. I don't know what that thing is. Pain, sickness, disease. Jesus, this is the set time this morning. Avenge me, O oh Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Vengeance belongs to God. There is a divine set time. Number three, when God strikes, it lasts. When he avenges, is forever. Nothing can change it. When he strikes, it lasts. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 14. Ecclesiastes 3, 14. He said, I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be what? Forever. So you don't have to worry about that which God avenge you this money is over. Amen. Amen. Whatsoever. I said, nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And that's what he did, Exodus 14, 13, with Egypt, Pharaoh and his devils. They went and running after Israel, the beloved of God. And this is what Moses said. And Moses said to them, and I'm saying to you this morning, fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you when? This day, this day, this covenant day of vengeance, you will stand still. God will show you his salvation. Amen. Why? He said, for the Egyptians you saw, you shall see them no more. Amen. Every pain, every affliction, every negative thing that followed you to this service, you saw them before you came, you shall see them no more. Amen. I said, you shall see them no more. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. He said, you shall see them no more forever. Amen. For whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. And God will avenge you Amen. in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Now, those three questions, why will God take vengeance? Number one, why will he take vengeance? These three things we should take note of. Vengeance belongs to God. There's a divine timing. And if he avenges, it's forever. Now, why would God take vengeance? Number one, God will avenge you this morning. He will avenge me. He will avenge all of us this morning so his covenant can be fulfilled. He will avenge us so that his covenant can be fulfilled. So that his plan and purpose for you and I can be established and fulfilled. And we saw that 
earlier on, Luke 21, verse 22. Luke 21, 22. For this be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. This day, everything written about you shall be fulfilled. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everything. But see, it's important also to, you must know what is written about you. Luke 4, 18. The book was handed to Jesus and he found where it was written of him. He found it there and said, no, this is fulfilling your hearing. So, that his covenant may be fulfilled, but you must know what is written. So, you must know that you are redeemed to do exploits. You are redeemed not to suffer again, not to be afflicted. Amen. So you must know what is written about you. So what am I saying? Don't go praying, Lord, if it is your will. What kind of prayer is that? Lord, if it is your will, let me be married. I say, okay. <laughs> if it is your will, let me have this. No, it is already his will. Amen. Amen. That's why he died and rose again. That's why you are redeemed. So you must know what is written. Isaiah 41 verse 21. He said what? Produce your cause, said the Lord. Bring forth your, your strong reasons. So don't pray if it's your will. No, you come to say, Jesus, you said this in Isaiah. You said this in Revelation. You said this in John. Amen. Bring your strong reasons. Produce your cause. That's what Hezekiah did, Isaiah 38. The prophet came to him and said, prepare your house. You are dead. Forget it. He said, no. What did he do? He turned his face to the wall. He said, God, I have served you. You are faithful God. Is this how you will repay me? No. Because you will not repay, recompense evil for the good I have done. The prophet was still in the foyer. He said, go back. Tell him he will not die but live. Amen. So you and I must know what is written. You must know what it is that the enemy is, you know, contending with you about. And go to God and say, no, avenge me. Amen. Praise the Lord. So be, what am I saying? Be a friend of this book. The Bible is not a textbook for pastors to preach. <laughs> Amen. It is a life manual for you and I. So open it, befriend it, find what is written about you, and then bring your strong reasons and produce your cause, and he will arise for you in Jesus' name. Number two point is to establish his prophecy. Amen. To establish his prophecy right here on the earth. Revelation 21, verse 3 to 4, he said, I heard a great voice and out of heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. He said he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And then you read further in that verse 4, he said that he will wipe away all their tears. So if the devil is trying to cause you to cry, he said, no, 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 no. God, you will avenge me to establish this one. This is what you said. This is what your word. I cannot be crying. He said there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. So I cast the root of that pain. Whether it be physical pain in your body or emotional pain. He said now, no, you are not allowed to be in pain. So God will avenge to establish this prophecy. And it is established for you this day. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now the second question we ask, who will God avenge? So just so why will he do that? You know, to establish his covenant, his promises. Now, who will God avenge? Number one, God will avenge his elect. His elect that do what? That cry. Not the elect that sit down and hope one day he will do it. No. God will avenge his elect that cry day and night. God's servant said, a closed mouth is what? A closed destiny. God will avenge those that cry to him day and night. This is not allowed. Enough is enough. Luke chapter 18, verse 7. Luke 18, 7. He said, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night to him, though he be along with them? 
shall God not avenge them? God will avenge you this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. What do we mean by that? In prayer, you go to God again and again. God avenge me. This, this cannot continue. The blood has spoken for me. This cannot be going on in my life. So you don't, you see, God's servant say, what you don't want, you don't what? You don't watch it. So God, avenge me. You will cry to him every day. Amen. And it's personal. So don't let anybody pray, okay, I'm praying for you. Some of us even pay people to pray for you. No. Nobody can pray for you as much as you can pray for yourself. I have this great privilege of being your pastor. And you know the truth? I lie not before God. I'm not praying for you every day. I have issues too. <laughs> Praise God. I do pray for you. But it's not, you know, like every hour. How many people can I pray for every hour? I just pray general prayer most of the time. So you must go to God and pray daily for yourself. He will avenge his elect, and you are his elect. So all this sending money to Ghana, to Sierra Leone, to Nigeria. Okay, now I'm mentioning nations. <laughs> right? All these prophets you have, private contractor prophets. You give them money, they are fasting for It's a lie. No, they are not fasting nothing. Take it now from me. Say, you send money, let me pray for you. I'll go to the mountain. He's, the man is in his house watching TV. See, you are in America, he's there in the bush praying for you. He needs your money to complete his uh, house project. Praise God. So, it's personal response. Go to, you are the elect. You, what, you're, there's nothing wrong with your mouth. The same way he hears me, he hears you. We're, we're all firstborn children. There's no, no um, uh, something. Amen. That cry to him daily. Exodus chapter 3. This is what he did. Verse 7 and 8. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people. Now, remember, it was supposed to be 400. 430 years of labor. And they were in that condition until they started crying. Israel, that is. He said, I have seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and I have what? Heard their cry. What did he hear? He heard their cry. If they didn't cry, he'll be looking at them. He heard their cry. He said, by reason of their taskmaster. This morning, God will hear your cry. Amen. By reason of your taskmasters. Amen. Everything that has held you down, God will hear your cry this morning. Amen. He said, for I know their sorrows. And I have come down. God will come down for you this morning. Amen. In the name of Jesus. So who will God avenge? The elect that cry. The elect that cry. The elect that cry. Number two, who will God avenge? The obedient. The obedient. God will avenge the obedient. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 6. He said, and having in a readiness to have revenge all disobedience. When, that is the key word. When your own obedience is fulfilled. So if you are living in disobedience, you can't, you can't avenge anything. Amen? Having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience. How many? All. all. When? When your own obedience is in place. When your obedience is fulfilled. So you can't be living wrong and expect God to arise and avenge you. No. You can't be living in disobedience. You can't be living in sin. You can't be bitter. You can't be holding grudges. You can't be doing anything, you know, consciously holding you down. And then you say, uh, die, die. It, nothing dies. God will only avenge who? The obedience. It's again, Luke 21, 22. He said, God will avenge so that all that is written may be fulfilled. Amen. All that is written, all. That we don't pick, get to pick and choose. So we must live according to all that is written so he can avenge us. Psalm 84 and verse 11. Who will God avenge? The, the, the obedient. Psalm 84, 11. He said, for the Lord God is 
a son and shield. What is it? A son and shield. He said, the Lord will give grace and glory to who? To, be, to the obedient. He said, no good thing will he withhold from them that walk. From who? Those that walk uprightly. He will not withhold any good thing. He will be a son and a shield to them. He will give them increasing grace and glory to those that are living right. Not the creeps. Amen. Amen. Not anyone creeping to South Dakota and uh, Duluth. <laughs> Praise God. All that is written. So, wife, don't misbehave because your husband is misbehaving. Amen. He said, I will show him. You are showing yourself. Obedient, only to the obedient. Praise God. So find what is written and do it. Don't say, I won't do it until he does it, or until she does it, whatever that case may be. And it's everywhere at work. Amen. Everywhere you go, represent this God that you serve, that is your Savior. Be obedient. Praise the Lord. Now, the third point, how do we make God to take vengeance? We've seen why. We've seen who. Now, how do we engage this God? You say, arise, O Lord, show yourself. What? How do we get God to take vengeance? Number one, true prayers without ceasing. Continuous. And that Luke 18, 7. Say so he will avenge the saints who call on, unto him daily without season. He's elect, which cry day and night. Matthew 21, 22. He said, and all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall what? Receive it. Whatever you ask. So you can't have it unless you pray. Amen. So prayers is important. You cry to him every day, daily, without season. Number two, not just praying, not just crying, but the cry of faith. So faith is important. How do we make God to avenge us? Prayer and then faith. Demonstratable faith. We demonstrate that faith by what? Obeying his word. Doing what the word says. Whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. John 2, 5. That is how we say we have faith. Timothy chapter 4, uh, 1 Timothy 4, 15. Say, meditate upon these things. Give yourself wholly to them that, what? Your profiting may appear. Amen. So faith is important. The just shall live by his faith. So without faith, it's impossible to please God. And number three, don't speak evil. Don't speak evil. Speak only faith-filled words. Speak those things you want to see, not what is happening. Amen. Faith-filled words. Remember the 12 spies. Moses sent them out to spy the land. And they came back with reports. And 10 of them said, ah, we saw giants there. We are not able to do we are little, we are like grass sofas before them. Only two of them. Numbers 13, verse 30 to 31. Numbers 13. And this guy, Caleb and Joshua. And verse 30. And Caleb still the people before Moses. What did he say? And he said that what? Let us go up at once. Possess it. For we are what? Well able to overcome it. You are well able to overcome it. Amen. And you will overcome it. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. So don't speak evil. Don't speak evil. Don't say what you don't want. Speak faith, filled words. Speak the word that you have found. The promises of God. He's faithful. He never lies. Speak those things that he has said about you. Say so you shall not be barren. You cannot be barren. Doesn't matter what is going on. Because the scriptures cannot be broken. 
He has been tried how many times in fire? Huh? So it is true. And it is, so your body may be speaking something. You speak to your body. God's servant, our father, Bishop Abio said that. He said, when he wakes up, I, don't, I speak to my body how it should feel. I don't allow my body to tell me how to feel. So you speak to your body. Speak to your life. Speak to your wallet. Speak to your account. So you don't say, I don't have. You have. They may not see it, but you have. The fact that it's not visible now does not mean it's not there. Don't speak evil. Receive that grace this morning. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, shortly we'll be going before the Lord as we're heard to cry to him. The elect that cry day and night. That cry. This is a covenant day of vengeance. And we ask God, arise, O Lord, and avenge me. And he will rise up and he will avenge you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. But before we go there, that prayer is important just as we have heard, to do it right. If you know that you are disobedient, again, 2 Corinthians 10, 6, having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience, because we are ready now to revenge all disobedience, anything that is negative, that is anti-covenant, is disobedience, and we are ready to avenge it, eh? to revenge it, but when your own obedience is fulfilled. So if your obedience is not fulfilled this morning, rise on your feet, everybody. We'll go before the Lord. Because maybe, perhaps, we have been trying to avenge ourselves. So if you are not born again, you need to be by coming to Jesus. And you simply ask for forgiveness. But maybe you were and you wandered away. Second portion is to ask God, forgive me, return back home. He will not cast you away. But the very third one, which is important, I believe all of us also must say that prayer. So maybe there's something or somebody you are holding. Let them go. And make them speak audibly. Jesus, help me. I forgive my sister. I forgive my mother. I forgive my father. I forgive my friend. Whatever it may be, your husband. You are holding your husband. You can't get anywhere. Yes, he hurt you. Let it go. Hand him to God. You have tried it over many months. How many years? Is, has it changed? Hand him to God. And see what God will do with him. He will come crawling and say, I'm sorry. So we'll go before the Lord this morning and say that prayer. Father, forgive me. Will you pray that prayer? Forgive me of every bad habit, every grudge. Forgive me, Jesus. Anything that I'm holding or have done that will not allow you to avenge me. Now, this morning, I drop them. Is somebody praying that prayer? Pray that prayer. Lord, arise, O oh Lord. Wash me clean by your blood. I repent of everything I have done this morning. Everywhere and everywhere I have fallen short of your glory. Jesus, I repent of it. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I repent. I let go. Now arise for me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. I give you all the glory in Jesus' precious name. Now, if you are not born again and you have said that prayer sincerely, I will ask for you to come to the front so we can pray together and I will have this privilege to welcome you to the family of God. Amen. If you say that prayer right here in this sanctuary or online, you say that prayer now. For those of us here, come. I want to welcome you to this church family. Now, for everybody else, we're here. Today is also anointing service. You have your oil. Bring it out now. For those that have said that prayer, come. Because we'll be receiving fresh baptism of the Spirit of God in this holy anointing oil. Now, you want to give your life? You have said that prayer. Come. I want to welcome you. Come, come, come. As you come with your oil, as you come with your oil, or you have rededicated your life, come, come, come. God has taught you, you have said that prayer. Before we pray the prayer of vengeance, you want to give your life, come, in the name of Jesus. Now, you have your oil, bring it out. Bring it out. This is oil that you brought this morning, but the prophet Samuel took the horn of oil, anointed David in the midst of his brethren, and the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord came upon him that day. 
there are diverse ministry, manifestation of the spirit of God, among which is the spirit of love that we heard this morning, the spirit of obedience, the spirit of, of love of God and for his people. Now, the spirit of wisdom will come upon you afresh. In the name of Jesus Christ, after the order, every seventh spirit that is written in that Isaiah 11 verse 1, as this oil comes upon you this morning, that spirit of God will come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you have your oil, just open it. And now, we go before, because we'll be praying, Father, the prayer of vengeance. Psalm number seven. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. I don't know what that wickedness is. Will you go before the Lord and pray? Father, this morning, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. In the name of Jesus Christ. Zeko Pratasiania, Nase Sosia. Establish me, oh Lord. Wickedness in my marriage. In my home, in my life, business or career, are you praying that prayer? In the name of Jesus Christ, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end this morning. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, to whom vengeance belongs. Oh God, to whom vengeance, show yourself. Vengeance belongs to you, Lord, show yourself. Now speak to him. In this situation, in this case, avenge me, Lord, avenge me. Lift up yourself, oh Lord, come down. He said, he saw the affliction. He heard their cry. Let him hear your cry this morning. Cry to the Lord. Cry to the Lord. Cry to the Lord. The pain must go. That report is canceled. It is not my portion. Now pray. Now pray. In the name of Jesus. Oh, He said they are elect. Elect. He will avenge them that cry to him. Father, it is written of me. I am fruitful. I cannot be barren. That is what is written. Now I take my children. My husband is coming. My wife is here. That green card is delivered. Favor on the job. Everywhere I go, doors open to me by the anointing. Peace in my home. Now pray. Now speak. Speak the word of the Lord. Lord, it is your will that I be married. Now my wife is coming. My husband is coming. It is your will. And I take up my children. Now I have my boys. I have my girls. I have my twins and triplets. I cannot be barren. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, to whom vengeance belongeth, avenge me of my adversaries this morning. This is the covenant day of vengeance. This day is the day of vengeance. Today is the last day of vengeance. The year of recompense is come. It is my time. Father, vengeance belongs to you. Now avenge me. Avenge me. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. In the name of Jesus Christ, everything written about you is established. It is fulfilled. Every buying and selling, I curse the root of it. Now you have come to Zion, every virtue of Zion will speak for you. By this anointing this morning, you are receiving fresh baptism of the Spirit of the Lord. As this oil comes upon you, the spirit of love is coming upon you. Amen. Wisdom and understanding in the name of Jesus. Amen. You begin to operate in diverse manifestation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And as this oil comes upon you, the Lord God will avenge you. Amen. He said, touch not my anointed. And do my prophets no harm. As you are anointed this morning, no devil is allowed to do you any harm. Amen. Everywhere you go, favor will answer to you. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now, you have your Bibles, open it and lift it up. In case you don't have so your neighbors around you, they'll let you have a little bit on your palm. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
This is olive oil. As the blessing comes upon this now, this becomes holy anointing oil. Amen. This now becomes the rod of God in your hand. Amen. With this rod, you will do size. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. the spirit of the Lord inhabits now. This becomes holy anointing oil. Amen. Wheresoever you anoint, the spirit of God comes therein. Amen. And as this all come upon your head, in the name of Jesus, receive fresh baptism of the Spirit of God. Now anoint your head and begin to appropriate that gift. You are the anointed of the Lord. I pray in wisdom, in understanding, knowledge, might, counsel. I know what to do. I'm not confused. I'm not confounded. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has anointed me now to do the impossible, to operate in the supernatural, to do exploits. By this anointing, great doors will open to me. Nothing shall be shut against me anymore. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are the anointed of the Lord. You are set apart to glory by this anointing. In the name of Jesus. He said your garments smell favor. The anointing. Merkashia and Allah. Everywhere you go, the anointing will speak for you. And Jesus went everywhere doing good. Why? Because God has anointed him. Now, this anointing is come upon you. You do good everywhere you go. In Jesus' precious name. And second, like it, Matthew chapter 3, verse 11 and 12, this mystery of the fan and the fire. John said, there's he who comes after me, whose sandal I'm not able to unlatch. Jesus Christ said he will baptize you with fire and with the Holy Ghost. We'll be taking a shot. we have that documented testimony. This brother took a shot and all the devil was flushed out. Everything planted in you will be flushed out. Amen. Every buying and selling will be flushed out. Amen. Whatever does not glorify God that is inside of you will be flushed out. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is liquid fire. As you take this shot, you enter into the fullness of God. Amen. Strength from above. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Now for all that believe, you take a shot of this holy anointing oil and appropriate that now. In the name of Jesus. Now your neighbor is around you. He will help you now. If you don't have your bottles, let's soak here now. Now, I'm the anointed of the Lord. Every chaff, whatever is buying and selling inside of me, ovarian cyst, whatever, diabetes, high blood pressure, fibroid, whatever, high heart palpitation, whatever negative medical report, the mystery of the fire and the fire has gone in now. You are perfected. In the name of Jesus Christ. Kidney problems, whatever it is. In the name of Jesus. Now receive your healing. Receive perfection. Now take it, take it, take it, take it. Let's all say Keprandozo Zezia. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. The oil has come upon you. You are set apart to glory. No door will be shut against you. In the name of Jesus, this week, favor will answer for you. Amen. Every buying and selling has ended. Amen. Now you are baptized unto glory. Amen. Fresh grace has come upon you. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Somebody is blessed. Give the Lord a clap of praise. And please have your seats. Now quickly this morning as we conclude, there are some special people here. Today is your first service here. Will you please rise up, bring your Bible and your pulse, everything you came to church. And please come to the front. Today is the first Sunday here at, in service. We want to welcome you. Please come. Please rise up and come. Come. We want to welcome you. Today is your first Sunday here. Please come. Please come. You are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. You are worshiping with us for the first time. Please come. Have righteousness. Please come, please come. Joy in the Holy Ghost. In the Holy Ghost. Righteousness. Joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom. Oh, don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Come on. Come on, everybody. Hallelujah. You're welcome in Jesus' name. This is Winners Chapel International, Minnesota. The Lord has brought you here to bless you. And you are blessed. Amen. You have come to the company of the blessed. This blessing will abide with you forever. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. God that has brought you here, whatever was a challenge before you came, it's already a testimony. Amen. 
the oil of God has come upon you afresh. As you go now, you begin to operate in these new levels of grace. Amen. In Jesus' name. And as you abide here, after the order of Obedidom, that in 90 days, three months minimum, you also will have a air-tingling testimony. Amen. Obedidom became the envy of his generation. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will become the envy of your generation. In Jesus' precious name. So we'll uh, like to uh, get to know you better. And we have a package which will be given to you. And in that package, we have a slip called uh, First Time Worshipper Sleep. We'd like to capture your data. So somebody will be, a uh, group of people will be calling you in the course of the week to get to know you better and to follow up with you. God bless you. We're happy you're here. Don't let this be the one and only Sunday. We'd love for you to come back and make this your church home. The Lord bless you. In Jesus' name. So as you go now, you go in peace. The hand of the Lord is upon you. Doors will open to you. In Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Will you please go through this middle eye as they give you that package? You're welcome. You're welcome. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. So much love in the kingdom. There is love in the kingdom. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a clap offering. Please have your seat, choir. Now, quickly, just for emphasis for us also, we heard all of our uh, weekly activities, particularly the prayer hour. Covenant of prayer is still 6 to 7, and we have the morning prayer at 9 and the evening prayer at 5. So please make sure you join us in any of that, uh, those prayer times. Amen. And very important, later on today, we have this great, great encounter with God right here. Amen. It's our night of worship. Hallelujah. So that comes out at 5 p.m. So just quickly go home, refresh yourself, and come back. Now, Second Chronicles chapter 5, verse 13 he said, it came to pass when the trumpets and the singers and everybody was singing and jumping before the Lord. Something happened. And that is what will happen right here tonight. In verse 14, 2 Chronicles 5, he said that the glory of the Lord came down. He said, the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord. This is the house of the Lord. This house will be filled with a cloud of the glory of God. He said that verse 14, that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. So if there be anything, there's a challenge that has persisted, just come. Come under this cloud. Because as we lift up our voices, our wonderful choir are ready. Amen. As we all stand and worship God, this house will be filled with the glory of the Lord. Nobody will need to pray for you or lay hands on you. Just come and back, get under the cloud. And those challenges, you see them no more. In Jesus' precious name. So that comes up tonight. From 5 until 7. Just 2 hours. So instead of watching Oprah tonight after service, come. And the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Also, don't forget, uh, this Friday is our workers' uh, summit. All of the workers in the house, we're all before God on Friday evening. 5 is the time. And next Sunday, hallelujah, covenant day of settlement. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You shall be finally settled. In the name of Jesus Christ. We're also meeting in that service as a, uh, a, a custom is Thanksgiving dedication. So we return every last Sunday to thank God for the gifts that we have received. Anniversary, birthdays, and new homes, new businesses, everything. We come back, new babies, to thank God in that service. God bless you as you come in Jesus' name. Now, rise on your feet one more time as we go before the Lord to thank him and to give him all the glory. Thank him and thank him. Thank him. He said, vengeance is mine and I will avenge. Now, thank you for that vengeance. The vengeance of God has come upon every anti-covenant issue. Thank him. Thank him. Father, we thank you. The word has gone. We have been anointed. Now we have been imparted with fresh grace. The spirit of wisdom, of understanding, the spirit of love for God, of obedience, the fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost we have received now. Thank him. We give you all the glory. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name precious name we have given thanks father we thank you take all of the glory in the name of jesus christ as you go this week go in peace 
Return with your testimonies. Great doors will open to you. The things you have long waited for shall be delivered. I cast the root of that pain. That medical report is not your own. You will go, they will tell you it's no longer so. In Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Now, together, shall we share the goodness? Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Peace. It's my new dawn era. What eyes have not seen nor ears heard shall be the order of the day in my life this year. Congratulations. Congratulations. In case you came after the offering was received, please, the basket will be in the front. God bless you. God bless you.